Hey, it's Peter Reed Miller from Peter Reed Miller on Sports Photography. Today, I'm going to address some of the questions that you, you viewers, have put in the comment section of my videos. So let's see what we've got. In my video with Kelly Cox, Kelly talks about the intention, having a, an intention when you shoot a photo. She mentions the fact that you might be shooting at 60 frames a second. Well, uh, Nino asks, 60 frames a second? Well, there actually are some consumer cameras that will do 60 frames a second. The best pro cameras will do 30. But the problem is not, you, you could do 60 on, you know, most of them with the electronic shutter, but it's, it's the pipeline, it's the workflow. You can't buffer 60 frames. You can't, you can't, you don't have a card that's fast enough to load 60 frames. So this is, this is the limiting factor. I don't think the technology of the cameras is limiting that. I think it's the, it's the rest. It's like when we went from uh, CF cards to CFast cards in the Canon EOS 1DX Mark II. Now I can, now I can shoot a way more, and I shoot RAW plus large JPEG. I can shoot a ton of them, which I could never do. The CF cards uh, were always backing up and, and buffering out, et cetera, et cetera. The CFast don't. So this is the technology that needs to catch up with the uh, electronic shutter and the camera lens technology. Promoting yourself as a photographer. Uh, Instagram is great to get it out there, as, as we call it, we would say a proof of life. You're there, you're shooting. But this is not something that's going to continue to have engagement because the only people who are seeing those pictures are the people who follow you. So you need to do more than that. You need to do a lot more than that to get recognized as, as a photographer. What has worked for me best of anything I've done uh, over the past few years has been these videos, the YouTube videos. People search on YouTube for, for sports photography, they find, they find me. Uh, unfortunately, with some of the other media, Instagram uh, and, and such, people don't necessarily search. So you're just catering to your group of followers. You're kind of within a circle. Uh, YouTube, it seems like I get new followers, I get new connections, I get new interactions all the time. So that's what's working for me. Uh, oftentimes, uh, when I have students apply for my workshop, they ask if we can shoot a specific sport. Uh, you know, hang gliding, horse jumping, something like that. Uh, and usually we can't, because we can only shoot the sports we can get access to. But my point is, it's not about the sport. It's not about baseball or soccer or, or volleyball. It's about the principles of sports photography, about backgrounds, light, action, angles. These are the things I try and teach, and hopefully they can apply them to whatever sport they're shooting. Sports photography can be incredibly demanding on your body, and, and, and in response to that, you really have to take care of yourself. Uh, I'm not saying you have to do a program of, uh, you know, you have to be a, a, a CrossFit or something like that, but I'm saying you really need some cardio work and some strength work so you can keep it up. I've been doing this for a long time. I've had multiple knee surgeries ending with a knee replacement. I may have another knee replacement, but I've kept going because I've always worked on keeping myself fit and able to do the kind of things that you have to do in sports photography. Okay, uh, I got a question about uh, processing photos after a game when I'm in the workroom. How many do I do? I mean, I shoot a total of around 3,000 photos at a football game. And I'm not a guy who edits in the camera. I'm old school. So I'll, I'll ingest those all. But how many I process and transmit totally depends on who I'm working for and what they want. Generally, I would say most agencies look for maybe 10 at the half, which would include some free game, and maybe a total of 40 by, say, two hours after the game. But that's just a generality. Everybody's different. And, and especially if something happens in a game that's really significant, uh, you want to get that out, you want to get that up. I've done that. I had a play in uh, Minnesota a couple of years ago when they beat the Saints on the last play of the game, the miracle in Minnesota. And uh, my editor texted me right on the field and said, get that out right away. So I went to the press room and boom, got it out. 
that's the kind of thing where you just have to, it's situational. You have to respond to whatever's happening. There are a lot of different ways people get their images up to their, to their agencies or their editors or whatever. I mean, some go to the media room and, and transmit at the end of the game. Some are running in and out all the game. Uh, there's technologies that allow you to transmit even from where you are wirelessly on the field. Uh, I'm going to bring in my friend Richard Maxson who's just developed a new device to help you do that. Uh, later in the year, we'll talk about that. But, you know, guys are, you know, in big events, guys are wired in. So there's a, there's a whole lot of ways to do it now. The technology is so broad, it's not the old days of just, you know, go in and put it in the card reader and, and that was that. So it's changing all the time and it's going to change more. So Yuzi asks if I know when the next uh, Canon 1, 1DX Mark III or the, one, the, the Canon R uh, mirrorless is going to come up in a sports version, a newer, faster version. I don't know. I wish I did. I hope they come soon. I look forward to them. Okay, I have a question about my uh, review of the Canon uh, 85mm f1.2R lens versus the Canon 85mm f1.4 EF lens. The EF lens works on the uh, Canon EOS system of uh, DSLRs, 5D Mark IV, uh, EOS 1DX Mark II, etc. Uh, the specific camera in mind was the 5D Mark IV. How well does that compare with the focus of the 50 millimeter, 85 millimeter f1.2 on the R? Uh, it's apples and oranges. They're, they're two different camera systems and they focus differently. I think, I think one rule of thumb is the newer the lens is, the better it focuses. But I think both those lenses are great lenses, they're super sharp, and they both focus very quickly on the cameras that they are designed for. Kent has asked about uh, my soccer video and uh, my football videos and where I like the sun to be when I'm shooting. Uh, um, first of all, we're talking two different things. Soccer players do not wear helmets, football players do. One of the big problems in shooting daylight football is oftentimes the sun is high and the face is shadowed. When the sun is high, and even moderately high, I want the sun behind the players. I want to shoot in what we call backlit because then I don't have a shadow, then everything opens up. Soccer is a little different. You're not going to get the same kind of shadows, but again, when the sun is really high, I think you're better off shooting backlit, and then as the sun comes out, of course we all want that low winter sun coming right down the field and going right so we see it in the player's eyes, and that's always what you take when you get it, but otherwise, I think there's a lot to be said for shooting backlit a lot of the time. Okay, Kent asked a couple more good questions. Uh, aperture priority versus manual, day versus night. In a day game, I always shoot aperture priority, almost always. When I get to full dark, I like to determine an exposure and go to manual. That way, you're not, it's not jumping based on the background or based on the dark uniforms and the light uniforms. So aperture priority in the daytime, manual in the full dark. Okay, Ken also asks about uh, using different, using a single focal point versus a group of nine. It really depends. Uh, it depends on your camera. It depends on the subject. I often, uh, the Canon, my Canon EOS 1DX Mark II gives me a choice of one, four, one on each side, up and down, a total of five, or the nine. I like the one on each side. I like the five a lot, and sometimes I'll go to the nine. Uh, I guess my rule is I'll use a method until I miss a picture and then I'll change it to another method. Jefferson Graham asks, where is Manhattan Beach Studios? Manhattan Beach Studio, where we film all these uh, great videos, is uh, part of what was formerly, what was built as Raleigh Studios. It's on Rosecrans in Manhattan Beach. Uh, my former student, Mark Nichols, has a studio space, a soundstage here. Uh, this complex is one of the most technologically advanced studios in the world. Many major motion pictures and TV shows are done on these grounds. So uh, that's where we are. Jeff, come on down. Sign up. We'll get, we'll get you in here. So that's some questions and answers for today. Uh, I look forward to doing more in the future. Put them in the comments of the videos. 
and good shooting. I want to thank my friends at GF Crew for making this video possible. If you want to make money shooting action sports, check out GF Crew. Go to gfcrew.com to join. It's free. They have a whole process and an app set up to help you make money shooting sports. Check it out. Get started today. Mm -hmm.